I'm Felipe Gonzalez. Bye. No. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is a, this is a, a, a great uh, event and a, and a fantastic milestone. After all these years, it's been a, it's been a long haul. And uh, I remember the days that, that Juan described uh, very clearly. I started at UNM in 1968, and uh, that was a heck of a year for anybody to start college around the world. The amount of uh, resistance and social movement and national liberation movements, it was just incredible in Mexico and in Europe and in China and in Africa. It was just an amazing time to be a college student. Um, and so the air was just charged with, uh, with, uh, with resistance, really, and, uh, and revolution. And the Chicano movement, as it came to New Mexico, actually achieved um, some very, very important uh, you know, uh, movements and uh, social change efforts, and uh, we were right there with the Chicano movement all over the country, and a lot of the stuff that was being spearheaded in other parts. I remember I was, I, I was a, a freshman in 1968, and Juan was already among the group of students who were already juniors and seniors, and, uh, and Juan was a little bit more savvy about the Chicano movement than I was. Uh, starting my first year in college and I remember one day he picks me up and he takes me down to the local Safeway and I said what the heck is going on here and so he goes uh, and he goes to the uh, produce section and he piles a huge like a big pile of grapes in the bottom of the of the uh, of the grocery basket and then he goes around and he gets like bags of potatoes and he puts it right on the grapes and he gets these huge cans of pork and beans and he puts them right on the grapes and he gets like big you know hams and he puts them right on the grapes and the grapes start splattering all over the place and then we walk out there I said oh, Juan what the hell are you doing <laughs> well those were non-union grapes Safeway had contracted with grape growers in California that had not signed contracts with the UFW and so Juan was one of my mentors initiating me into the Chicano movement, and then Sequiel and, and others, and Ricardo. It was uh, a collective education uh, process, and it was, um, it was really, really a great experience, life-changing. Put me on my path towards, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but really put me on my path uh, to my career. And for me personally, the most important thing about Chicano studies is it taught me how to be a public speaker, because if it hadn't been for that, I probably wouldn't be up here being able to say anything to anybody. So, uh, so we're a member of, I was a member of UMAS and participating in protests at the pit. It was this, uh, and did you tell that story? No. So, uh, a lot of them. <laughs> there was a lot of consciousness of BYU because BYU didn't admit blacks into the, into the church or into the priesthood. And uh, so the Black Student Union was organizing a, a protest when BYU came to play the Lobos in the, in the pit. And so, of course, we allied ourselves with that little cause. Um, and so we went down there and we marched down to the court, stood along the court. When they played the national anthem, we held our hands up like this. In solidarity, the, the, the Lobo uh, players wore a black band in protest against BYU policies. Uh, that was an incredible event because when we, when we went back up to the top of the pit, we were sure they were going to kill us. It was, you know, it was, we took a hell of a lot of crap from the fans there who just were not in agreement with, with what we were doing. So it was, uh, it was that kind of a, a charged event, uh, charged uh, atmosphere that we were part of. So here I am, uh, a freshman, and uh, so um, Umas, um, uh, President Hedy has agreed to fund three students, uh, one from the Kiva Club, Native Americans, one Black Student Union, and one from Umas, in order to research ethnic studies programs for each one of these groups. And so then the question becomes, okay, who is going to be the Umas representative? And so uh, these guys were either graduating 
where there were, Arturo was going off to join Earth Day, Ezequiel was going off to graduate school, <coughs> all of the upper level students were taking off. And so who's left to take this job? Everybody turns around, and there I am, mousy little me, you know, in my first year in college, and so I was the one that ended up uh, being hired by, by the president, Farrell Hetty was his name at the time. And so we took the summer of 1969 to research Chicano studies, and it, it was me and Ricardo Barros, who passed away recently, uh, to our great loss. And Prospero Chavez, who got jumped in my little black Volkswagen Beetle and drove to Southern California, and we visited several Chicano Studies programs already in existence there, Cal State LA, Long Beach. Um, and then we came back and we wrote, uh, we wrote a proposal for each one of our uh, Ethnic Studies programs. And, uh, and I'll be damned if, uh, if, if our proposal was not accepted. It was, it was pretty amazing. And uh, so we had our, our first uh, uh, acting director of Chicano Studies, Ricardo Gutierrez, no? Louis. Louis. Oh, Louis Bransford. Louis Bransford was the first. Mm -hmm. And then Antonio Gomez took over in the summer. And then when did you do it, Ricardo? 70. In 1970. Um, yeah, so... Um, so that was uh, th that was pretty interesting, and uh, just to just to relate a a little uh, Chicano corruption here. But uh, so in the proposal, and I made sure that there was a work study position for Chicano right. studies, and so guess who got the work study position in Chicano <laughs> studies? So then I was a work study, I was a work study, <laughs> I was a work study student in Chicano studies for another three years, and so that was a that was a fantastic job. That was an incredible job. Uh, because one of the things that I started to witness was the, it must have been like hundreds of students, you know, by, by the time it was all over with thousands of students who filtered through Chicano studies at one time or another. Some of them were kind of pissed off at us because they looked at us as sort of the viejito generation, you know, the newer generation. That's, that's how social movements really get sort of uh, um, an important dynamic social movements is that the newer recruits sometimes they get they feel that like they're more progressive or more advanced or more radical than the founding generation or the older generation. We had some of those interesting dynamics. Uh, so, but um, it was just a, it was just an, an amazing uh, an amazing experience. I went off to graduate school and the program uh, continued. Um, and I thought maybe it would fall apart without me, but it didn't. So the, the, that was pretty cool. I need to acknowledge uh, Tobias Duran, who was the longtime regular permanent director of Chicano Studies. And he did yeoman work with hardly any resources at all. But he stuck with it, you know, through tough times and some pretty good times. And then he became, he got into a position where he was really able to sustain Chicano Studies through his, uh, through his uh, uh, funding as director of the Center for Regional Studies, so he definitely deserves uh, some acknowledgement. Um, so, so yeah, it would be, uh, it would be uh, an interesting saga to be able to document the, the generations and the changes and the people and what happened to them and all of the activities and the, the, uh, the politics because one of the things that happened is that students were at UNM and then they filtered out and joined many different um, uh, organizations within the movement, the land grant movement or the Black Berets or uh, uh, sometimes within their own institutional frameworks, the medical school, for example. But through it all, Chicano Studies was the, the headquarters and our, our old building used to be uh, right there where Dane Smith Hall is now. Yes. We, had a, we had a little casita there, and uh, so it had a nice basement and where we, we hid all of our dangerous weapons for the, for the revolution. <laughs> 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 so, uh, congratulations, Irene, for pushing this through so quickly. And so, uh, that's, that's amazing work, because you've only been on the job for a short amount of time, and 
you are one of the record holders in terms of, you know, uh, getting something important done. And so I congratulate all of you and those who assisted you. And so now we're in a, all in a position to assist Chicano Studies as it goes on to its even, even brighter future. Thank you.